He says that here in this world, the one thing that he wants you to know is that he couldn't have had a better daughter than you. Thank you for taking care of him the way that you did. Thank you for loving him the way that you did. Michaela, where are you from? I'm from Delaware, Ohio. Oh, perfect. Well, first of all, I'm glad that you're here. Mm -hmm. Is this your first time attending? Yes. All right. You look like you're skiing shitless right now. Like you're looking at me like you're seeing a ghost. Uh, <laughs> Listen, <I'm nervous. laughs> don't be scared. All right. If anyone should be nervous, it's me because I don't know what your loved ones are going to tell me, show me, or what I'm going to see on that side of the screen. But what I can tell you is this. All right. If you pass out, I'm an EMT. I can revive you. If you die, we'll just oh, talk okay. to you. So you're in the best place. You don't got to worry. Well, first of all, there's a couple souls that are here. But first of all, I keep hearing of the soul that's stepping forward with me that passed tragically here in this world. And when I'm connecting, I keep hearing there was questions over suicide or overdose. Who was that to you? My father. Okay. He's here. And can I please tell you that there's a lot that I have to cover with your dad here in this world? Okay. Because right away, his soul is coming through and he's saying to me, Matt, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Please apologize to my daughter. And before I even get into this man's passing, there's so much that he has to say to you. Because right away, he keeps flashing back to all of these different instances in your life, in your relationship with your dad. And he keeps saying to me, I know, I know, I know. And he's saying, I know, for one reason. He's telling me this because your dad tells me that he feels like he failed you here in this world. Because he <laughs> says to me, Matt, my job was to watch over her, protect her, be there for her. He says, but it wasn't until that I got, out, got to the other side that I realized that she could not depend on me. Yeah. Your dad saw, tells me that throughout your life, you did everything that you could to try to have a relationship with him, to try to be close with him, to try to have a bond with him. Yeah, me and my dad were pretty close. <laughs> but he also says to me, Matt, I did not deserve that. He says that your whole life with your dad, you worked towards that relationship with him. He says, but he knows now that he should have been more involved. And he knows now that he should have done more to stay connected to you. Yeah. Because listen, do I know that your dad was your best friend? Yes. Do I know that you loved him how he was? Absolutely. And so does your father. But when your loved ones go to the other side, they can see things through a different perspective. They can see the things that they missed out on here in this world. And even though you made excuses for your dad, and even though, you know, um, you accepted your dad for who he was, he also tells me, Matt, I could have done better. Yeah. And that's the reason why he's here right now. Because your dad is telling me what a special person you are. He says, Matt, my whole life, he says, my relationship with my daughter was so easy. And I'm going to be very honest with you because that's who I am. Your dad showed me that throughout his life, he burned bridges with a lot of people. Like, even though you and your dad were so close, he tells me that he had different challenges and struggles within his life. And at one point, he's even telling me that he had alcohol struggles here in this world back in the day he's bringing that through and he said to me matt that was my first wake-up call he talks about having that wake-up call with alcoholism he tells me that he got through all of that but then he also tells me that he started having this issue he's telling me major pain so do you know if it started off as pain throughout his body if he was taking pain pills how do you connect with pain pills with him um a few years ago he had both his knees and hip replaced and they prescribed him meds and here recently but he just passed in february okay so we were assuming that because we found an empty pain pill bottle so we didn't know for sure we found him so we didn't know i'm going to tell you right now when i'm connecting with your dad this was a really tough reading to do because there were two things that were going on with your father okay do i believe this man was in pain absolutely but do I think that this turned into a, an addiction? Absolutely. Because when I'm connecting, your dad is telling me that he was not taking those pills the way that he should have been. I'm going to be honest with you. I don't think your dad overdosed on the pills. I think he had a heart attack. That's what I'm feeling. That's what we thought. Because when I'm connecting with him, he's telling me about being in pain, being in pain. And then he tells, started telling me that he didn't know. Because I said to him, where was your pain coming from? And your dad can't tell me. So I think that he started to have a heart attack, was taking those pain medications, thinking that it was all connected and just died. He was having severe bad pain. He fell a couple of times, had pain in his back. And we 
didn't do an autopsy, but by the looks of them, they said a heart attack. I'm going to tell you right now it was a heart attack. I know from talking to your father, because what's amazing is, okay, is that sometimes being an EMT actually helps me as a medium. So when I ask your loved ones certain questions, they'll tell me certain things. So when I'm connecting with your dad, he keeps showing me that he didn't know where the pain was coming from. Meaning that if he's having a heart attack, most people think a heart attack is right here. I've had times where people have had heart attack and their big toe would be hurting, believe it or not, and nowhere else in their body, but yet it was a heart attack. Coming around the back. Right. So your dad tells me that he was in constant pain every day. So when he was taking those pain meds and then the more pain was coming, he shows me that when he took that amount of pills, right, he thought this was just going to go away because I asked him, what did you think? And your dad shows me taking the pills. He shows me him going to bed or trying to go to bed. And he thought that he was just going to be able to wake up the next day and be fine. Yeah. <laughs> so your father tells me, Matt, he says, the one thing that I regret is calling her. I should have called her, he tells me. <laughs> but your dad tells me that if he were to call you, he already knows what you were going to say. He knows that if he called you, that you were going to say, dad, you need to go to the hospital. You need to go. You need to call 911. You need to get checked out. And he said, I didn't want to worry them that I wasn't going to go. That's what he tells well, me. Two days prior to him passing, he fell and I went out there because he was delirious and wasn't making sense. And his blood pressure was super low and I'm in the medical field. So I knew, and he would not let me call the squad. <laughs> he would not let me get him to the hospital, but I knew when I looked at him, I said, you're going to die. And two days later he was gone. And he knew if he called me that I would be calling 911. Well, listen, your loved ones don't change, but I'm going to tell you something that you need to know that's going to help you to heal. What's cool being a medium, and this doesn't always happen, but sometimes it does, right? Sometimes your loved ones will show me what would have been different if you did call that day? What would have been different if he did go to the hospital? Now, I'm going to tell you the God's honest truth. If you called the hospital, would your dad be living? Would he have made it past that day? Absolutely. But would he have made it past that month? I don't think your dad would have made it even three months because what your dad showed me is that whether he went to the hospital or not, there was too many things wrong within his body. So if you called, if you called the squad and you brought your dad to the hospital, he would have lived, but it would have been a very painful passing. I will tell you that because he would, they wouldn't have released him from the hospital. And I'm going to tell you right now, your dad tell, shows me that he would have passed in the hospital. Do I think he would have passed with a heart attack? No, I don't. But I think it would have been, it's impossible for me to say what he would have passed from, but I do see your dad hooked up to machines and passing. I've been holding that over my head since February. <laughs> I know you have. And listen, what I love about the other side is they give us what we need to heal. So not all the time, but sometimes what happens is your loved ones will come through and show me everything, right? Because sometimes the only time we can heal is if we know the truth. So your dad says to me this, he says, Matt, at the end of the day, the one thing that he wants to let you know is that he heard you. He heard what you said. So he knew what his options were and he knew that he had to go, but he was a grown man. And whether you called that, that hospital that day, whether you called the ambulance that day, your dad wouldn't have went. He wouldn't have went. I know. That's why we didn't do it. And the crazy thing is like, we stayed out there for a week with my mother and while we were going through, through stuff for the funeral home, I screamed out to my dad. I said, dad, touch me, show me a sign. Cause things were happening in the house. Lights were flickering, like TV shows were paused, like all kinds of stuff. He touched my head and my hair went up on my head. Listen, so, what's crazy is, is that your loved ones are energy and you can feel them. Yeah. So know that when you had that feeling and that happened, know it's his way of showing you that and letting you know that you felt his touch. So That's I've been really needing this since February. I needed that. <laughs> well, listen, I got to tell you, your father's also thanking you for the tattoo you got for him as well. Did you get the tattoo in memory of your dad? I'm starting. Yeah, I've gotten a couple. Perfect. And is that also your father's writing? Because he talks about his writing. Yeah. Perfect. So know that when you, that when he got, when you got that, your dad sees that. But he's also telling me this. He says, Matt, tell my daughter not to go too crazy. He says that you've been thinking about all these ways to remember your dad. And he says to me that you've been going a little bit crazy thinking, should I add more to this tattoo? Should I do this? Should I do that? He says to me, what you did was enough. He says that here in this world, the one thing that he wants you to know is that he couldn't have had a better daughter than you. 
Thank you for taking care of him the way that you did. Thank you for loving him the way that you did. He says, but I wish that I had more time to spend quality time with you. That's what he tells me. He says, but what he's so happy about was that he's getting to let you know this now. 